There's another way. And what they've done, it's still applicable, but you have these signs. You have the planets, the, the moon, the stars. And what man has created is a system of religion. Uh, it is very, very prevalent today. Astrology. And they try to tell the future based on the stars. And you pick up the paper today in our modern civilized world. You pick up a paper and you can see if you're a Capricorn or if you're a Sagittarius, you can see what today is going to bring for you. In our modern world, can you believe that? All the advancement, all of the, the, the great evolution of man to come from sheep, sl throat slitting, barbaric, sacrificial tribesmen in the, out in the desert to modern skyscrapers and, and newscasts and Doppler radar and there are still people. They'll call you barbaric and backwards for praying to God. And they'll open the paper and see what their day is going to bring based on somebody's description of the presence of the stars. All of this is in an attempt to show man's connectivity with the universe. But really what it becomes is more of man's bondage to those symbols and an attempt to escape. I like this picture. I don't know, I don't know what, the, who the, what the, the artist had in mind when he did that, but... He, it looks to me like he's trying to get out from the stars and the sun and the moon. And I think that's where man's ultimate, they, they talk about Atlas trying to throw off the burden or carry the burden. And yet, these things become a burden. People in bondage to their horoscope. And frankly, you take a horoscope in the morning, you cut them all up and you throw them around and you just pick them out. It's like a fortune cookie. It doesn't mean anything. It's, haha, -ha, funny, and, and it may be worse than that because you went looking to a soothsayer, to a fortune teller, to a, see a seer of some kind to see what they said. And what do you do inevitably if you, re if you go looking there in the morning or on a daily basis? You inevitably look back on the, over the course of your life to see, I wonder if that's it see that actually seems like it's working. They have made temples of the sun and the moon all over the world. The towers of uh, the, the, pin, the pyramids at Giza, from a, an aerial perspective and their size and relative distance to one another and, and uh, where they're laid out, it is exactly the belt of Orion. In Cambodia, there is a temple complex that's laid out precisely, if you, from an aerial view, if you map out these temples, it looks like Draco the constellation of the dragon. Man has, from the beginning, from remember Babel, what they do? They built a tower unto heaven. They didn't, they didn't build a skyscraper. That's not what they did. They built, a t they, just like you go around the world today and see ancient temples built to the, 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 the constellations, to the stars, to the sun, the moon. They built a temple to worship the sky. What happened was the sky opened up and dumped water on them. They want to reject the God who created all things and worship the creation. And he warns us. He says, And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God divided unto all the nations under the whole heaven. He's divided the whole, the skies is divided unto the nations, aren't they? I can look up... Um, there's a song somewhere out there underneath the pale moonlight. It says uh, that we might be look, wishing, uh, might be wishing on the same bright star. Well, if somebody's in China, they're not wishing on the same bright star you're wishing on. Because they, they don't see it. Or especially if they're in Australia. There, we, we, uh, in Scouts, we learned about all the, all the constellations and they're the northern constellations. You have the North Star. And then you have all these constellations that revolve around the North Star in a, in, according to what we see. The Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, uh, Draco, um, Cassiopeia, the, the W up in the sky, or the M, depending on what's, what way it looks. 
And we, we can see those. Well, if you're, if you're a scout in Australia or in Argentina, you're talking about different constellations because it's not the same. You don't see those. You just don't see them. You talk about the Southern Cross, which you don't see here. We don't see the Southern Cross because it's, well, south of here. So where are the, what, are, what and where are the signs of heaven? Well, they're in space. I know it sounds like a, I know it sounds like a weird, a weird description, but we, heaven is, there's three heavens, right? At least. Jesus ascended above all heavens. Well, one of the heavens is our sky. You can have something in the, he in the heavens. You have clouds, don't you? Birds, bats. There are things in the heavens that aren't stars, but they're not in outer space. And I would also have to say that when, when God allows man to put an international space station up there, and Brother Dave sent me a link one time so you can go out and you can look. You can actually see the space station fly across the sky. Let me tell you something. If God let man put that up in the sky and you see it like a star, that's a sign. So things in, the signs of the heaven are in space or the sky. The sky goes so high, it turns from blue to black, and you're in someplace else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want to talk a little bit and from, from my youth, and I don't know where it comes from. Some things just you are interested in. Some people are interested in fishing and hunting. I'm, I'm interested in those things, but I've never had an opportunity to go hunting. I've been casting a lot, fishing once. And um, some people, that's, that's their life. I mean, you'd go see Jason Nutt. That's, he loves that. He would... He would, that was, he would... If he could do that all the time, if he could do that for a living, he would do it. I would probably love it too, but I just haven't, that's not something that I've been able to do. But we all get little habits, or, or not habits, um, not habits, hobbies. We get hobbies that we involve in. And I've had a mild hobby that I, I didn't just go collecting all, but I've, I've always loved flags. I've always loved flags. And um, I remember I, I, I one time got a, we went to the UN with the class and I picked up a poster with all the flags of all the member states and I just love flags and and uh, that that we have a couple of flags that represent our that actually our whole movement has been represented by flags is an, is for me it's very it's it's all interesting plus it's just a fun because I can draw it draw the other one think about it talk about it but this sign it's it was weird going to Canada uh, I spent a couple, uh, I think it was a week and a half or two weeks up there with Brother Walter Bagren when, uh, when I was around 16, 17. And um, it was just weird being in Canada. And the one of, the, of course, the money is weird, but driving around and seeing a Canadian flag at the bank and the school and City Hall, it, that's just weird. It's just weird. I'm used to, you're used to seeing old glory flying. And here's this, uh, Maple leaf. And that the flag is a sign of the nation. 